Hello and welcome to Autodesk Simulation TV, Simulation in Action. Today we're looking at an MES nonlinear analysis, permanent deformation. My name is Mike Fiedler. I'm a product support specialist here at Autodesk. I'm going to walk you through today's topic. For our first slide here, we're going to give you some problem description. The exercise that we're going to do is going to look at performing a mechanical event simulation nonlinear analysis on a steel gripper bucket with a 5,000 pound load on it. Since our topic is permanent deformation, that would indicate that we need to utilize a mechanical event simulation analysis with the nonlinear material model so that we can capture that permanent deformation. What we're going to look at specifically, or our key learning objectives for this particular video demonstration, are how to set the appropriate analysis type, how to set the material model that we're going to utilize so that we can capture the permanent deformation, how do we set a load curve, and then ultimately, how do we review the results. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this analysis. Going to the program, the file type that I'm going to open up is a Fusion file. And I'll go ahead and select my .dwg file that we'll utilize. Say open. You'll notice briefly the Inventor Fusion product will launch because I have it installed on my machine. The model will import. So the first thing, once we get into the software, is choosing the analysis type. If you have been using linear static analysis or if you've been doing a thermal type of analysis, for instance, the analysis dialog here is going to come up with whichever type of analysis you utilize last. You want to go to the pullout menu on the right hand side here and ensure that you set the appropriate analysis type. For our MES with permanent deformation, we're going to choose the analysis type MES with nonlinear materials. So the MES would indicate that we can have motion. The nonlinear materials models will give us the various material models that we'll need to utilize here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that analysis type and say OK. And the model will import. So the first thing that we're going to do is mesh this model. Going to the Mesh tab, I'm going to go into the 3D Mesh settings. Now I've taken a look at this model beforehand, and I've decided that I want to use a slightly finer than default mesh setting. So I'm going to go ahead and move the slider over towards the right. We're going to take it down to about 40% on the slider. And I'll go ahead and hit Mesh Model. Other mesh sizes will work. That's just one that I feel is uh, pretty respectable for the model. So the surface meshing is done on the model. I'm going to go ahead and say no to viewing the mesh results. Over on the left hand side we are using a brick element type. One of the things that catches most people off guard whenever they first start with a mechanical event simulation with nonlinear material models is they, they presume because they've used that analysis type or set that analysis type that they are automatically using a nonlinear material model. We should take a look inside the element definition screen. So I'll right click and then select the element definition. And the first thing that you should note here in the element definition screen is this is where all the various material models are contained for an MES with nonlinear material models. First of all, the analysis type, or excuse me, the analysis uh, formulation by default is set to an isotropic material model. If I scroll down the list here, now I can see the other material models that we have available for us. So other than the elasticity material models, we have hyperelastic material models, there's foam material models, viscoelastic, quite a few of those. And then if I scroll on down a little further, then I get into the plastic material models or plasticity material models. That is the material models which allow us to define a yield on the material and then how the material behaves once it reaches the yield strength of the material. So we'll be selecting the von Mises with isotropic hardening for this particular analysis. Before I do that, let's leave it at isotropic for just a second. We'll take a look at what that changes. So if I edit the material, the default material here, and I say edit properties, we can take a look at the material properties we have. You see a mass density, you see a modulus of elasticity, you see Poisson's ratio, and a shear modulus. But what you don't see here is what's important and that would be the yield strength of the material or anything that indicates how that material behaves beyond the yield. So let's go ahead and make that change to our material model and we'll see what's different. So I'm going back into the element definition screen. I'm going to move the slider down until we reach a von Mises isotropic. 
So for metal materials, probably that would be one of the simplest material models that you can utilize uh, for plasticity. Simple bilinear curve, I'll say OK. Now we'll edit the material again. I'm using the Autodesk Simulation Material Library. So straight from the library, I'm going to go ahead and select the A36 material, and I'll do Edit Properties. Now you can see that we have a mass density modulus Poissons like we had before, but we also have some other important bits of information here. That would include the yield strength of the material, which for the A36, of course, is set at 36,000 PSI. So that lets the analysis know that once we reach that point, we have now reached the yield strength of the material, and I need to behave differently beyond that point if I continue to load my structure. So that brings into play the strain hardening modulus here, which sets the slope beyond the yield. I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and we'll say OK again. It's asking me, do I want to replace the material with my newly selected material? Yes. So now we have the material model appropriately set, and we've selected a material for our model. The next thing I'm going to do is constrain and load it. So I'm going to take it to a top view here, and I'm going to go into a circle select mode and tell it that I want to select some surfaces. And where the holes are here, where we would have cylinders and bushings, the other portions of this assembly coming through, I'm going to select those surfaces, just moving to the side here, or rotating a little bit so you can see the selected surfaces. I'll right click, and I'm going to add some surface pin constraints. For our constraints, we're going to say that we want to fix the radial direction, we want to fix the axial direction, we're going to leave the tangential section or constraint free. We'll say OK to that. And then next thing that we need to do is apply some sort of load on the model. And again, I've taken a look at the model beforehand, but you probably have some pretty good idea about what sort of load you want the structure or the assembly to be able to withstand. Or you might want to put a large load on there, run the analysis out and say, OK, what sort of load can I put on that model before we reach the yield strength of the material? I'm going to go into a point select mode, say that I want to select a surface right click on that surface and I'm going to add in my surface force here. The surface force that we're going to utilize for this particular model is 5,000 pounds force and I'm going to leave it normal. We'll say OK. Before we run the analysis, one last thing that we need to do. What I'm going to do is go into my setup tab. In my setup tab I'm going to go to parameters. Now on the parameters for the analysis it tells us by default that we have a one second duration in the analysis and it's going to run in 20 steps. For this simple analysis, I'm okay with both that duration and the 20 steps, but what I do want to do is go over to the load curves. On the load curves tab, the default setting is that we go from a multiplier of zero at time zero to full load application at one second. Since we're looking at permanent deformation, what might be interesting is that I ramp it up to this full 5,000 pound force, but then I also unload my structure so that we can see what sort of residual effects we have. So what I'm going to do is just say add row, click the button for add row, and I'm going to make a change here so that at time 0.5 seconds, we're at a full one times that 5,000 pounds, and then we'll say at time one second, I want to ramp it back down to zero. Or to take a look at a simple load curve, if I hit view plot, now you can see we're going to go no load to full load at half a second, and then we're going to unload it over the next half of a second. We'll say OK, and OK again. And at that point, we're ready to execute our analysis. So I'm going to go to the Analysis tab, Run Simulation. And before it actually gets into the simulation portion of it, the first thing, of course, that it's going to do is complete the solid mesh. So the meshing that we had utilized before was the surface mesh. Since we are utilizing a brick element type, what it's doing now is generating the internal mesh, and it'll get into the analysis. As my analysis begins, the part will load into the results environment. So as it calculates the results, I can begin to take a look at the results as soon as it's calculated the first output step. All right, so there's our first step. You can see over here that we have now two steps out of the 20. Remember that we are 
loading the structure up over 10 steps, and then we're going to unload it over 10 steps. So at 5 of 20, I'm at 50% of my load. You can see my displacements. I'm going to switch to a tensor. If we take a look at the Y tensor as this thing is running, now you can see that we are at step 7 of 20, and our results are, what, about 35,000 or so. So getting pretty close to that yield. What I can also see on the model using a tensor is I can see what is in tension. So the red, uh, having the load applied in this direction, that would be my tensile load. And then on the bottom side of this structure, I can see my compressive load. There we are at full loading now, step uh, 10 of 20. And we were beyond the material, uh, the yield strength of the material. And now we'll get into the unloading phase of this. As soon as we're done completely unloading it, and the analysis window will close itself, we can take a look at some of the results that we have available for this particular analysis. OK, so our analysis has completely run. And here you can see that we are on the last time step. This is time step 20 of 20. We still have stresses on the model, even though our loading has returned to zero, or our applied loading has returned uh, to zero or been completely removed from my analysis. What do we want to look at? We can take a look at, one, the stresses. And we can see that we have residual stress on the model having exceeded the yield. We could also take a look at displacements. Before I do that, why don't we go to the View tab. I'll click the Load and Constraint button to remove the loads and constraints just to clean up the model a little bit here. And then if we go back to the Results Contours tab, we can click on Displacement. And again, keep in mind at this very last time step, even though all of our load is removed, you can see there that we have a maximum value of displacement of 0.014 inches of displacement. So we're showing permanent stress, residual stress, and we're showing permanent deformation in our model because we've exceeded the yield of the material. I will point out that up here in the panel on the load case options portion of it, we can toggle back and forth through our steps. So I can go all the way back to my first step and advance through my cases if I want to review it, take a look at my middle time step, so there's my time step 10 of 20. And again, if I wanted to, I can go back and take a look at the uh, stress tensor in the Y direction. So you can review all the results, post-process the model as you'd like uh, once you've gone through the complete simulation. So that's what I wanted to illustrate today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Take care.